So just moving on from that previous uh, tonal study involving the cube, I'm just going to do the same again here, but with uh, using colour. So let's just um, draw up a, a quick cube here. Just going to move the tripod up a bit. There we go. Okay, so taking yellow now, I'm going to do the same thing, and that's just put a wash very light yellow, so this is the lightest colour over everything but one side of the cube. So notice with a wash how I'm using lots of um, lots of paint there. Just made a little splash there, a bit of paper towel, just clear that up. Okay, carry on. So this is the side of the cube that I'm not going to paint. Not following my pencil line there, I just uh, moved it. Okay, keep going. So this is the first wash, number one, in a, a pure yellow, the lightest colour There we go. I'll just dry that up. So on the second wash here, I'm going to put blue on. Um, I'm just going to vary one aspect to the to the black and white tonal wash that I did. So here's my blue. Now going on top of the yellow, what we should end up with is a slight change of colour. I'll show you the, the the pure blue in a moment, but this this will turn into more of a, a greeny blue. Obviously, yellow plus blue equals green. So just washing this down and down this side too. There we go. Whoops! I'm actually going to cover that side. Following the same line as the, the white. Right, so in the in the third wash here, I'm going to put a pure red, like a pinky red, over everything except the uh, the white again. So I'm going to by putting the red over the yellow, it should turn orange, and by putting it over the green, what we should end up with is a, a sort of browny colour because red plus yellow plus blue are the constituents of brown in various uh, various ways. Okay, so let's try that. Now again, this wash is darker. It's quite a dark wash, actually. Notice when I'm putting the wash on, I'm just letting the paint fall down. And when I reach this point, the wash splits into two. Alternating between the two sides of the wash now to avoid any drying lines. Keep revisiting the glass, loading it up, <clears throat> and then just bringing it down. What I'm going to do here is just leave a couple of patches of that green. In fact, I'll just leave one at original green just there. So this is the 
fourth wash and the final wash and I'm just going to put what is a a dark purple on this side of the uh, the cuboid quite a short one for the last one Okay, and what I'll do now is explain a little bit more about what exactly has happened here. Right, let's just have a look at what uh, what we've got here. These are the four original colours I've used, and if we give them a value, let's just say that the, the white paper, as always, is naught. The yellow has a value of one. First wash, second wash, third wash, I haven't dried the purple there, has a value of four. Tonal values, okay? Let's have a look back up here. We have naught for our white paper. Then this side of the of the, of the shape we've got a, a wash of one, which was the yellow, and a, a tonal wash of three, which was a red, so that has a tonal value of four. Let's look at the outside of the shape now. Oh, we'll just have a quick look at this patch of green I left, which is the uh, yellow and the blue which has a tonal value of 3. But the outside, the colour surrounding this and surrounding the uh, the cube shape is the yellow. Let's go back to the yellow, the blue and the red. So 1 plus 2 plus 3. We have a tonal value of 6 for the outside. And if we look at the last side, the purple, which has a tonal value of 4, is a combination of all four of these colours put together. Okay, so we're going to all add up. So we got a tonal value of 10. You can see that? 10 for that side. So we can say that this is 10 times stronger a tone than that. That's 10 to 4, 10 to 6, 10 to 3. And this is essentially how watercolour works. Um, so I'm building up tone and colour there.